this not what the conquistadors did to your people? Are you a rich port? You are? No, you're not. But that's what they call you. But they've only called the place that they conquered and the people that they conquered after they got you to do what they wanted you to do. Just real quick, hey, my brother right here, what's your name again? Jose. Jose. Right, what the officer was actually showing you is the difference between being a Puerto Rican and Ephraim. You understand that? It's a mindset. So the laws are going to change your mindset, but sometimes our people don't want their mind to change. Watch this. How often does a bus come to pick people up? Every hour. Every hour. So watch this. How long has it been since our people have actually known their God-given name? 400 years. Now, part of that is because our minds have not been set to regain it. We want to do everything else except what God says to do. Now watch this. When you did take off your hat, come here for a second. I want to show you something. Just real quick. Just real quick. Real quick. When you took off your hat, you were starting to regain your nationality. Is this not what the conquistadors did to your people? Are you a rich port? You are? No, you're not. But that's what they call you. But they've only called the place that they conquered and the people that they conquered after they got you to do what they wanted you to do. Real. You understand that? And then watch this. They got you in clockwork. They know that your mentality is clockwork. You understand that? So you, we got to come back out of that. Now watch this. Get Leviticus 13. Because watch this. You ever heard of being, what, what does it mean to be, I know, I know. What does it mean to be brainwashed? This is going to be the last question I ask you. What does it mean to be brainwashed? Two minutes. It was, but I just got here, bro. Come on, deal with your brother. Real quick, just answer the question. To be brainwashed, what does it mean? Quick answer. Leviticus 13 and 30. You, I'm asking you. It's on you. The time is on you. What does it mean to be brainwashed? You don't get it? So, to be brainwashed is what the conquistadors did to our people. And now, we want to look like them. Let me show you what God says about looking like them. Read. Leviticus chapter 13, verse 30. Then the priest shall see the plague and be whole. So that was your job. As the tribe of Ephraim, your job was to be a governor, a ruler, a prince, a priest. But now, we're waiting on the bus. Now we're in a lower state. Now we're trying to say, well, I only got time to do what the white man wants me to do. When are you going to rise up to do what God wants you to do and be what God wants you to be? That's the problem. You're, you're making time to be your oppressor's dog. But you're a ruler on the face of this earth. Put it together. So what does God say about our appearance as those rulers? Read. If it be in the sight, deeper than the skin, uh -huh. and that be in it, a yellow thin hair. So that blonde hair in your head is what? Read. Then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. Unclean. But once we obey one of God's laws, now God can deal with us on deeper levels so that we can begin to fix ourselves. But within the black, Hispanic, and Native American community, we have gotten so comfortable with all the pleasures of this earth that we no longer want to go back to our real source of power, which is God himself. We don't even want to rely on our Messiah who looks just like you. But now that we want to blonde our hair, we want to follow the ways of our oppressors and think that they actually have something in store for us that's going to be greater than the oppression that they've already been keeping us in for the last 400, 500 years. Well, yeah. wait, get that in Lamentations. Get that in Lamentations. Because today our people have to wake up to the understanding that is who you are, number one, and the salvation that comes to you when you regain it out of the Bible. Read. Lamentations chapter 4 verse 17 And for us Our eyes as yet fell For our vain help So watch this, my brother right here How old are you right Just, just a real quick question, how old are you 37 So how many times have you went to vote About one time in those 37 years How often do they allow us to vote Every four years Every two years if they want to do something In the senate right but every year that they get you to vote or participate in all these campaign ads, what are they saying to the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans? What are they saying? You don't know. But 
Well, why don't we vote for them to get in then? Well, well, let me ask this question. That one time that you did vote, why did you vote and who did you vote for? You voted for Obama. What was Obama doing or saying to you to where you wanted to vote? You just voted because he was black. Now, with this black man being in office, because he actually won, right? What did he do for you, your people, and the uplifting of your community? Bring it out. Come on. Now, I got a question. You say you don't know. I got to ask this question. Who's stronger, Obama or God? God. So we're going to read out of God's word what he said about the voting process. Listen close. Read. Limitation, chapter 4, verse 17. And for us, our eyes as yet filled for our vain help. Who is the us? Who is the us in that scripture? Because I've never heard that read in this church, that church, any church, everywhere church. I've never heard that read. Who is the us in that scripture? Come over to this side. Let me show you who the us is. God says, oh, and, and matter of fact, this is Jeremiah. He said, as for us, my people, who is the people of God? The children of Israel. But what has happened to us is we've become other people's possessions. We've become other people's slaves, and now we're still in their system that keeps pushing slavery. Right. So much so that they took away our God-given name right. and gave us some fake names. These yeah. are nigger names. That's what I got to call it. Nigger names. Names that keep us ignorant, downtrodden, and desolate as a people. You understand that? But when we come back to the Bible, we have a true identity. You understand that? Read on. Read it from the top. As for us, as for us, when we're in this system, read, our eyes as yet fell for our vain help. So people vote because they want some type of change. Ain't that what Obama said? He said, uh, this is hope you can change the question after his term of being elected. And I said, what did he really do? He was like, I don't know. I just voted for him because he was black. Then the second term, he had a song written for him. My president is black, the Lambo is blue, and I don't know what happened for me or you. Now don't be confused. We lost. Right? Read on. In our watching, we have watched for a nation. We watched for a nation. Do we rely on each other to make change in the community anymore? Huh? Do we? Really? Kind of. Because last week we was out here teaching the people, and my brother said, no, nah, I ain't really want to do nothing. Huh? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't Watch this. When we're voting, who is over that, that government? The, vote, the, the government that we're voting into or voting for, who are, is it us that's running that government? Ah, uh, no, no, no. You, that's the problem. Our government is the Bible. That's right. You understand that? But we're not going. A lot of our people don't go by the Bible. We want to vote for Obama. We want to vote for Biden. We want to vote for Trump. We want to vote for Nixon. We want to vote for Clinton. Because guess what? Obviously, the white man got the solution to all the black man problems. Let Bill Clinton play the saxophone for a couple measures, and obviously, he got the solution. Let Joe Biden give us a stimulus check. Obviously, he got a solution that'll keep us, you know, or fix some kind of our problem. But has that changed the state of our people? No, it has not. That's why God says, looking to this nation, the same nation that put us into slavery is vain, useless, no good. And that's what we have become as a people, vain, useless, no good. We've gotten spoiled by the comforts that America has given us. Finish that off. In our watching, we have watched for a nation that could not save us. We've watched. Wanted, longed for, Stockholm Syndrome. This is what we wanted the same nation that put us in slavery to also be our saviors. That don't even make sense. We want the same people who rape, rob, pillaged our people to come back and actually save us through policies that they already wrote to say that we were three fifths of a man. What kind of foolishness? That's why God says it is vain help. Get Deuteronomy 28. Let's show the vain help in the curses for us being disobedient to God. Do you think we would get a reward or a punishment? You got children? Your ch you tell your son, I need you, I command that you come in the house before the street lights come on. He comes in the house one o'clock in the morning. What's going to happen in your household? Or what should happen in your household? I don't know, I feel that person. Huh? I 
Personal. That's personal. Would there be a reward or consequences for going against your word? Consequences. Plain and simple. A whooping, whatever, punishment, uh, what do they call it? Grounding? It's <laughs> a nice word. Grounding, timeout, right? Well, guess what? The situation that our people are found in today is God's timeout. Punishment, ass whooping. You understand? So us being going into slavery is God's ass whooping to us. And guess what? He we rejected him so much, he put the whip in somebody else's hand. And they don't care about us like God care about us. Hey. But the way that we show that we care about God is coming back to his commandments. Hey. So what was one of those curses? Read that. Matter of fact, I, I want a vain help uh, oppression. Yeah, so read verse 15. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 15. Hey. But it shall come to pass. So things will happen. Read. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So if we disobey God's word, God's laws, God's commandments, if we disobey that, read. To observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, God. that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. What is a curse? What is a curse? You say you don't, you're not sure what a curse is reading the Bible? Okay. Now, we just said that the curses fell upon us for disobeying God's laws. We just clarified that consequences will come out of disobeying God's laws. So, if God is saying, for disobeying me, you will have curses upon you, what would you deduce that to? What would you sum that up to? Would it be a curse, or a consequence, or a reward? All right, you said uh, you said all three of them. Okay, he gonna reward us for our wickedness. Okay, let's let's see what the reward of wickedness is. Bring it up. Let's get that in verse twenty eight. Let's see some of the curses. Let let's start clarifying what the curses are. Read Deuteronomy chapter twenty eight verse twenty eight. Uh -huh. The Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness uh -huh. and astonishment of heart. If you are blind, mad, crazy. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? You said depending on what case it is. Now, that's madness in itself. What, watch this. Watch this. I want well, Before you light that cigarette up, I want you to read the side of that box. I'm going to show you madness, right? With, with you, what you just did. Bring read the side of that box. Read the side of that box. Bring it up! I want you to read it on the mic. Read it on the mic. <laughs> read it on the mic. Read it on the mic, you know? Uh, smoking by pregnant women may result in fatal injuries and premeditation birth and low birth weight. Now, if that would happen to a pregnant woman, what is the, what are those, it's, I'm sure it's in all caps. What was, before you read that, it said a Surgeon General's what? Surgeon General's warning. So if it's dangerous to pregnant women, wouldn't it be dangerous to all people who participate in that activity? So when God smites us with blindness, madness, and astonishment of heart, you just read a warning from the white man to tell you, really, you don't need to do this, but if you do it, you're going to make me rich and I can kill you easily. And you're accepting that. Huh? Everybody who's smitten with the curses of God through disobedience. You understand that? So God is showing us that we must obey to actually show forth wisdom. If we want to, uh, if we want some real help, the help comes from the Lord. And guess what he's telling us to do? Simple commandments. Keep your temple clean. Don't smoke. Don't defile your temple. You understand that? But if you follow the white man more than you gonna follow God, you're still a slave. Point blank, period. And there's no other way to say that. Free! Slavery is a mentality nowadays. Let's get that in Deuteronomy 28. Read uh, verse 40. I want you to hear the mental slavery before you leave. I need you to know that either you're going to be a mental slave when you walk off, or you're going to turn yourself back and repent to be a king, a ruler on the face of this earth. Simple. Listen, listen, listen. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 48. Therefore, shut them so here in America, my brother right here, what's your name? TJ. TJ, what's your nationality? I'm going to ask you. So-called, so-called Mexican. Now, the reason why I say so-called, come over here, TJ. 
I'm going to show you something. Because what has happened to our people is we have taken on these names in our captivities. But what does God call you? You, you said you're a so-called Mexican. But Mexican you won't find in the Bible. But everybody, all, all so-called Mexicans, they, they believe in the Bible, right? But what do you see, uh, have you ever seen Mexico in the Bible? No. Have you ever seen Issachar in the Bible? No, you haven't. Oh, you got to open it up. And then you got to identify yourself. So watch this. We're going to show you Issachar in the Bible. But I want you to stay at Deuteronomy 28, verse 48. Then we want to go to Genesis 49. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 48. Bring it up. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. So what we're reading in the Bible is what has happened to the Israelites. The nation of Israel. What has happened to us is now we serve our enemies. Is that still happening till this day? Do we pay taxes? Do we work in the fields, cotton fields, fruit fields for our enemies? Are they not destroying our people at the borders when they're trying to come? Are they not turning our people against one another at Bring the borders? It is that in. not happening amongst our people? It is. But this is what is happening to the children of Israel. Read on. Which the Lord shall send against thee. The Lord sent our enemies against us because we disobeyed him. Now, Matter of fact, amongst Aztec and Mayan history, weren't they sacrificing unlawful animals or giving unlawful sacrifices? Yeah. Sacrificing humans, sacrificing jaguars, lizards, all kind of iguanas and craziness. But that, that's not the sacrifices that God was asking for. Right. You understand that? Right, right. So for our disobedience, God says, I'm going to punish you and I'm going to put you in the hand of your enemies. That's for right. us, we call them slave masters. That's right. For the, uh, the so-called Hispanics, Native Americans, they call them conquistadores. Bring it out. See? Now, read on. In hunger uh -huh. and in thirst. So we have to serve our enemies when we're hungry. Yeah. McDonald's, Wendy's. Hey, hey, uh -huh. hey, check it out. You know, no disrespect. Hey, no disrespect. I kind of got, 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 you know, going, but I heard, I heard, I heard what you said. Right. But I'm, I'm on a miss, bro. I, I got to get a lot of things. Hey, man, I ain't mad at, hey, watch this. Now, the question would be, the question would be, where are you going? I got, I got to get a lot of road to get my life right, you know what I'm saying? All right, so that's why you're here. You didn't even equate that. Yeah, man, God is good, man, for sure. Right, now, what color is Christ? Hey, I don't know, bro, I don't know. You don't know? Now, watch this. Get John 14 and 6. Get John 14, and, and you need to listen hey. to this. If you're trying to find your way. Hey, hey. If hey, you're trying to find your way, the only way to do it is by the Bible. Hey, Point blank period. Right. Hey, I got a Bible. I got a Bible. Right. I read the Bible every day. Bro. Okay, but do you understand? That, hold on, hold on, Paul. So we're gonna stop. We're gonna stop it. Hey, real, real quick. Hey, real quick. What's up, Doug? You said you read the Bible, but you said you never saw your identity in the Bible. Bring it up. So we were talking about mindset earlier. The mindset that you're in right now is a Mexican mindset. Yeah. The mindset we're giving you from God is your rightful place as a priest and a ruler. That's it's a right. mindset change. But that's the hardest thing for the black man, Hispanic man, Native American man. That's all. So keep reading. This is what we were talking about, that mental slavery. Read on. Yes. The book of John, chapter 14, verse 6. Uh -huh. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, uh -huh. the truth, and the life. So if you're trying to find your way, you want the truth and you want to find a real way of living, you got to come back to the Bible to discover that. That's right. All right, brother. Hey, God bless you, homie. Now, how does God bless? What, where do we get these blessings from? Where do we get these blessings from? Get that uh, Revelation 22, 14. Because what has happened is our people have lost track of themselves. And, and we run away from that thing. So... That's why I got to ask my brother, where is he really going if Christ is the way? Right. If Christ is the way, where are you going? Read. The book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 14. Oh. Blessed are they that do his commandments. So to my brother TJ, the way that we will get blessings is if we do the commandments. That's right. But how would you know that the commandments pertain to you? If you think as a Mexican that the Bible pertains to everybody, all, all, all we got to do is just open the book and God just pours out his blessings. God has to give you the understanding of his commandments first 
for you to do them. Read on. That they may have right to the tree of life. And through keeping God's commandments, we'll earn our way into salvation. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family.